Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last video we started implementing an allocator class for managing descriptor heaps. After writing the initialize and allocate functions, we ran into a problem caused by the fact that resources and descriptors can't be removed in an immediate fashion because we are using a multi-frame render scheme and those resources could still be in use by the GPU. So today I'll start by setting up a system for deferring release of resources to a point that we are sure they are no longer referred to by the GPU. After having done that, we can continue writing the rest of the heap allocator class. Here I'm going to add a couple of vectors. And for each frame, when we try to free the scriptor handles, we just remember what those handles were. So that when we come back to that frame again, we know that those descriptors are no longer referred to by the GPU. So here in this function where we want to free this handle, we just remember what index it was on. Now we need to know the current frame index, and we also have to let the renderer know that there are pending release operations. In that case, we set a flag for the current frame. Let's write these two functions first. Here we need to add a variable that we can use to set a flag, and that's just an array of integers, as many as frame buffers that we have, and we can use those to set the flag. Now in our render function, we can check if for the current frame a flag is set, and in that case, we can call a function to handle deferred releases. And then we can go ahead and write this function, which processes deferred releases. Notice that I decorated this function declaration with no inline, and that's because I don't want a bunch of instructions that are rarely executed here in this function. And that's a bit more friendly towards the instruction cache, so we don't have to jump over a bunch of instructions. We just jump over a call instruction instead. In addition, I'm going to make handling deferred releases a thread save operation by using a lock guard. Now the first thing that we do is to clear the flag for this frame, and then we can go ahead and release pending resources. Now before implementing this, I'm going to add an instance of our heaps in core CPP. Here we have four descriptor heaps, one for render targets, one for depth stencil, and one for shader resource views. This one is shader visible. And we also have a UAV descriptor heap that we will create to be not shader visible. Now we will have to initialize this in the initialization function. 
Here we initialize our heaps, and because we don't need that many render targets and depth sensible views, I'm setting those values to a lower value, and we'll have a lot more texture resources that will be sampled in the shaders in a typical game, which probably is going to be much larger than this value that I'm using here. But for now, we can start with a smaller value like this. And it's, of course, shader visible. We would want to check if these initializations succeeded. So I'm going to have a Boolean for that. If any of these function calls returns false, then this result will become false and be returned from this function. And also, now that we have these descriptor heaps, we need to release them when we shut down. Okay, now that we added descriptor heaps to core CPP, we can go ahead and implement this function further. So because we set the deferred releases flags here, then here, this function will be called, and here we can call back to our descriptor heaps and notify them to free their pending descriptors. Of course, we need to implement this function, but before that, I'd like to also give the heaps a name like we did here for the main device. And now that we have process deferred releases, we need to call it here in the shutdown function. Here we are going to release some resources using deferred release and descriptor heaps are one of them. And therefore we need to process deferred releases again at the end of shutdown function when everything else has been released. Now let's add this function. So at this point, we know that we can free the descriptors that we tried to free before. Again, because we are going to access class data, we need to lock the function. Here we get a reference to the array of indices for this frame and see if there are any indices in there for the slots that need to be freed. And if so, we go through each one of them and add that index to the end of free handles. And also we clear the array of indices for this frame because we processed everything that we needed to process. Now, one more thing that we need to do here is also to initialize this array because when we call initialize and it's for the second time, then this array might contain some deferred releases. So we need to clear those arrays. Strictly speaking, these arrays shouldn't contain any elements because it means that they contain some elements that still need to be freed. So we just basically assert that they are empty instead of clearing them. This should be return, obviously. Okay, now we have to do a couple of more small things and then we can call it a day. Here in process deferred releases, we only handle freeing descriptors, but there are more things that we need to do here, like calling release function on interface pointers that we need to release. And therefore I'm going to have another function in core that is like regular release, but it's called deferred release. 
And here, instead of calling release function right away, we just call another function that's internal, and that will add this pointer to an array for later release. Now I need to write this function. Like we did in case of the descriptor heap, where we went ahead and remembered which descriptor handles should be removed later by adding them in an array, we just do the same for resource pointers. So here I'm going to add an array of interface pointers for each frame buffer, and then we can release those later. First, we get the frame index. Here again, we are locking the function because it accesses deferred releases, which we are going to also modify in this function. So if some thread is calling this function and we are in the renderer calling this function, then there would be a data race. And that's why we lock both these functions. And because now we added a resource to this array of resources that need to be released later, we set this flag so that the render function will call process deferred releases later. Now all we have to do here in process deferred releases is go through the resources in the array for that frame and call the release function. Here we get a reference to the array of resources that need to be released for this frame. And if that array is not empty, then we release all those resources and we clear the array. As you might have noticed, we have this function that sets the flag, and this one is not locked because writes to an integer on x86 architectures are atomic anyway. So there is no need to lock it when it's accessed by different threads. But that means that when we are in this function processing the deferred releases, this flag could be set. And when we would clear it at the end of this function, it would overwrite that value. And that means that in the next frame, those deferred releases wouldn't get processed. But if we set it in the beginning and it overwrites the new value with zero, then it doesn't matter because we are processing this frame anyway right now. So that wouldn't cause a problem. Then I think there is only one function that needs to be implemented and that's a release, which is also really simple. And we also check that all descriptors have been freed before this point. That means that the size should be zero. Now looking at the shutdown function in the core, we can see that these releases use deferred release, and that's why we also called process deferred releases here one more time. Now you can see here that four descriptor heaps have been created, and because I copy pasted the names, they all have the same name, but they are really different types of descriptor heaps. And then I can go ahead and close this application and see if everything is released properly. There are no memory leaks and there are no live objects. Let's go back and fix the names for these heaps. And on an unrelated note here in command frame, I would like to set this fence value back to zero when we are releasing it. Okay, let's tidy up a couple of things and then we are done for today. Here when we are in debug build and we try to enable the debug layer, it would be okay if this function fails. So I'm just going to remove this. And instead, I'm just going to check if it succeeds. In which case we enable the debug layer and otherwise let the user know that this debug layer is not available.
Okay, I think we achieved the objectives for today. And I'm going through the files and summarize what we did. So today we created this descriptor heap allocator, which creates a D3D12 descriptor heap, which is a chunk of memory either on the system memory or on the GPU memory. And it has both a CPU address and a GPU address in the case that it is shader visible. So if it is on the GPU, then it has a GPU address as well. And this class is purely in charge of managing and tracking the allocations and the allocations of resource descriptors. And when we allocate a resource descriptor, it will give back a descriptor handle, which again contains a CPU address and potentially a GPU address. And then we went ahead and implemented the initialization of the descriptor heap and also the functions that allocate slots on that heap. And we also made a deferred release or deferred free system that will handle releasing and freeing resources and descriptors. So that one is in the core functionality of our renderer, where we added a function to set a flag that would notify the renderer that there are some things to release. So here in core, in the renderer, when we see that the flag is set, we call this function to process deferred releases. The function will call back process deferred free for each one of the heaps that we created. And well, those might not have anything to process, but we still might have some other resources that need releasing, which we do here. So in the descriptor heap allocator, when we free a descriptor, we just remember its position in an array and then set the deferred releases flag so that the renderer will call us back later on when we are allowed to free descriptors for a particular frame. And when we get called back by the process deferred releases function, then we can finally remove these descriptors and add the indices for the released descriptors in our free handles array. And that concludes the implementation of descriptor heap allocators and deferred release system in our low level render. In the next episode, we are going to have a look at swap chains and using them in the render surface class. Thank you for joining me today, and I really hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus, there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.